Welcome to Module 4, looking at other descriptive statistics and data distributions. For this module, a summary of the learning objectives are that you should be able to calculate and interpret deviation scores, z-scores, and box plots, explain and interpret the use of effect size, distinguish between theoretical and empirical distributions and probabilities, and calculate and interpret the probability of events. In this mini lecture, I'm going to focus on calculating and interpreting Z scores and using those to calculate the probability of events. Earlier descriptive statistics from a previous module looked at things like central tendency, including the mean, median, and mode, and measures of variability, including range, standard deviation, and variance. These new scores that we're going to be looking at will be able to tell us where a certain value is, taking into account the range of variation that exists. And so one way to look at data is to use a, a standard score, known as a z-score or a z-score. And this is looking at it, the deviation from a mean that's standardized for the standard deviation. So here we have our value z that is equal to our data point minus the mean, which is the deviation that we were using to look at our calculations of standard deviations. And now this is divided by the standard deviation of the sample itself. You'll notice for this, this is capital S, because in this example, looking at standard scores, it's only relative to the sample. So we can ask, where does the score or a value that we have lie relative to the mean and the variability of the other scores? So we can ask, how much below or above the mean is a certain score? This gives us a way to compare raw scores, because this is actually unitless. If you thought of what the units would be on the numerator and the denominator, they would cancel each other out. So you can look at um, relative values. And that can allow us to compare different sets of data that are on completely different scales. And you can also see in this equation that our value of z, for the mean itself, if it was the value of x was the mean, it'd be the mean minus the mean. So the value of the z-score here would be 0. We can take this idea of standard scores and apply that to the normal distribution. And a standard normal distribution is bell-shaped, symmetrical, and theoretical. So on the left side here in green, we can see a normal distribution of data, and the mean is 1,010. We can use z-scores to standardize it, and then that would create the curve that we see on the and then we can use that information to create the curve that we see on the right-hand side in blue, where 0 now represents the mean. One standard deviation it has the value of plus 1 for z. Two standard deviations on the positive side of the mean has a value of 2. Three standard deviations is 3. And then it's symmetrical on both sides. We can also look to see how much of the data is contained within one standard deviation or one unit of uh, our z-score here. Um, and it's on either side of the mean, it's 68.2% of the data is found within one standard deviation. And as you get out to the tails on the extreme ends, you see that there's less and less data that has those values since they are extreme. We can use a table, and there's a table in Appendix C, it's Table C in your textbook, that will tell us for a certain z-score how far away that is from the mean and how much data lies, if we're looking at column B here and matching that up with the figure at the top, how much of the data falls between the mean and the value z, and then column C is from the value z until the end of the data. And one thing that really makes sense, because this is symmetrical, is that if we have a z-score of 0, right, so that's where our value is equal to the mean, then 50% of the data, right, so 0.5, is going to fall between the mean and the extreme end of the data for on one side, and then again on the other side for a sum of 1. 
So this might seem a little bit abstract, so let's work through an example. So the expected length of pregnancy uh, from some data here is 266 days with a standard deviation of 16 days. And we're going to assume that the length of pregnancy is normally distributed. So why might we be interested in this? Well, we might want to know what percentage of women give birth at least two weeks later than average. So that's 14 days later than day 266. So we're interested in day 260 or later. And so let's go and work through this example. Okay, so here is what our setup for looking at what percentage of women are going to be giving birth two weeks or later than the average. And the first thing that we need to do is we need to take our value and determine a Z score for it. So here's our calculation for Z. We're interested in day 280 and later. The mean is 266 and the standard deviation is 16. So we just work through this example. And our Z score is going to be equal to 0 0.875. So something really important to do at this stage or even earlier is to draw a normal distribution. Here's our mean, day 266. And the value that we're interested in is day 280 and beyond, right? So we're interested in this data out here. Okay, so this is the data that we're interested in. We know that our value for our z-score is 0.875. So now what we're going to do is we're going to look at table C. So here's our information for table C. I encourage you to follow along in your book. We're looking for a value of z that's in the left-hand column here of 0.88 with some rounding, so we're looking for 0.88. We're interested in that value and beyond, so when we look at the little diagram up top, we're interested in column C, because we're looking from that data point and beyond, and this is column C, and so we just follow that across, and our value is 0.1894. So our step two, was to find our z-score in the table. It was 0.88. Step three was to identify the percentage of the data. And the value we had was 0.1894, which is going to give us a percentage of 18.94. And then our fourth step here is to draw our conclusion. And the conclusion that we would draw here would be to say that Almost 19% of pregnant women deliver their baby two weeks or more later than the average length of pregnancy. So our conclusion is that almost 19% of pregnant women deliver their baby two weeks or more after the average. Delivery date. So that concludes this mini lecture. I'm going to prepare another example um, as another mini lecture.